All right, boys, we're rolling. Um, we got, yep, yeah, about average 77 on right now. I'm sure there'll be more, but 802, you're late to the party. 803 now, actually. So good seeing you guys. I know we're going to get going soon. Um, June's right around the corner. There's tournaments opening up. So we got to have that ready mentality. You know, uh, Coach Burdex on with us today, 12 year big leaguer, uh, left handed pitcher, starter, reliever. Um, and when I talked to him before the call, I think he has a lot of value for you guys, not only just from pit, from a pitching standpoint, but just from a mental standpoint, guy that survived playing this game at a really high level for so long. And at the end of the day, he's got a lot of good, he's got number one, he's got a great story, a good journey. And at the end of the day, he's got, um, a lot of good tidbits that we can use, uh, once we get going again. So. Coach, talk about your kind of your high school and college journey because I feel like these kids that already have their mindset on going to a Division One school, or if I don't go to Arizona State, that I'm never going to be a good baseball player. This, that, the other. Talk on your journey a little bit because I think it's important that you know, hey, there's more than one path to the big leagues. There's more than one route to the big leagues, and you got a pretty good story how um, how you got there. You know. And that's that's the truth of the matter. You know, I, I we talked earlier. We, I got a full ride scholarship to Rice University and Texas Tech, both, and then neither one of them saw me throw a pitch. You know, and we talked about the idea of again the epitome of not knowing who's watching when you play. You know, uh, out of high school, 5'10", 5'11", 150. You know, didn't hit the weights, didn't do much. Like I said, I just played for fun. You know, I was going to use it to get someone to hopefully pay for, for my college, which South Suburban did, went to JUCO for a couple of years. You know, again, grinded it out, played my ass off. My, my whole focus as a, as a player was I was going to prove everybody wrong. You know, I, I was going to let sitting there saying, oh, you know what, he can't do – if you tell me you can't do so, – that I can't do something, I'm going to do everything I can to prove you wrong, you know, until I either acknowledge the fact that, okay, yes, this, I, I just can't do it, you know, or I'm going I'm to kill myself trying, you know. Um, and, and, and that's that, that, that mentality that really kind of got me going where every time I took the ball, I, I was a starting pitcher, you know, uh, at, at South Sub, you know, after my freshman year, they're like, listen, you know, you're, like I said, you're a little guy. You're, you're never going to hit for power. Outfielders hit for power. You're a pitcher only, which sucks. Cause I, you know, I like throwing from the outfield, the whole nine yards. Um, but uh, – just grinded it out. You know, I, I, like I said, I, I, the, the, we, we talked to the, the, the BSF, the bigger, stronger, faster. I didn't utilize that information right there until I was at Rice University. You know, um, I finally did hit the weights. I was finally, like I said, Graham told me, he called me in. He's like, listen, we, we have a guy that was our closer last year. We don't know he flunked out or he did something that he kicked out or whatever. They said, he may come back in the spring. We don't know. You know, so he couldn't offer me a, 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 a starting position because he didn't know who we were going to have starting. He didn't know what we were going to – so it was a, a toss-up. Plus, being an out-of-state guy, a first-year JUCO guy, you know, so you're going to have to earn your stripes. Um, and just by just grinding it out down there, getting in the weight room, working my ass off, and basically having that work ethic, you know, of not letting anybody ever beat me. You know, I want up going from not even getting drafted my two years at JUCO to being the 135th pick, you know, my, my junior year, you know, being a fifth-round guy, you know. Um, so it's just a grind, and, and, and that's the one thing that the, the one thing I'm, I'm, you know, and it's funny, we, I'll, I'll, we'll say grinder, you know, and, and again, Dean, Kanji, myself, Seth, we, 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 we're grinders. We were guys that, like I said, we weren't the number one guy. We weren't the superstar on the team, but we were a guy that, you know what, you needed something done, you call us, we got it done for you. And we would find a way to get it done. And that's, that to me is where the grinders are really what make up the game. Because the stars, they're going to get their at bats, they're going to get their hits, they're going to get their home runs, but it's those grinders, those 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 nineteen to twenty five, or say even the twenty to twenty five guys, you know, the, the last five six guys in the roster can really make or break your season. Um, you know, um, I played in 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 um, New York, and uh, one of our guys, uh, I just lost his name, but he was walking around one day and he's got a SWAT t uh, a t shirt on to SWAT across. And I was like, uh, hey, man, I said, what's with the SWAT t-shirts? He goes, Birdie. He goes, we're on a SWAT team, man. SWAT team only goes up when the shit's gone either really good or really bad. You were up by 20 or down by 20. That's when you put the SWAT team in. 
So <laughs> those are the grinders and stuff like that. Like I said, they would have one-year contract guys, like I said, that are just trying to make, make a little bit of money in the game, trying to survive. And God bless us. Like I said, the guys that we have in the Dome, we get that. And that's why you see us in the Dome teaching you guys that, is to sit there and say, hey, listen, man, you might not have all the tools, but you polish the ones that you have and, and you have a, a, an attitude that, you know, again, you're, you're going to go out and give it the best every time and you're going to turn some people's heads and say, I like that guy. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, you know, it, you just have to be able to, everyone needs a little bit of luck and you have to be able to take that opportunity when you get, the, when you get your chance and you just got to, you know, you got to, your game's got to be polished enough to where you don't have to, you just got to be you. And if, you can survive being you, then at the end of the day, you're going to survive for a long time. And, you know, there's so many metrics out there. The, you know, but the, everyone's concerned about velo. Learn how to pitch. You know what I mean? And, Bertie, talk about big – the so so I kind of flown into this big board. Now, pitcher's mentality, routine, routine, ah, routine, ritual, and then a little bit of razz. I got my Joe Boo shirt on today because, you know, when you're, uh, you know – when you're kind of that, when you're that reliever guy or you're that starter, like those dudes and their routines and their rituals are, you know, who was the one dude from the Cubs that used to eat like licorice in between innings? Like there are some weird pitchers out there with these routines and rituals, but I'm telling you, that is a mental advantage for them, right? They have to be in their Joe Boo state. Otherwise, they're not right. And so, uh, Bertie, talk about your pitcher's mentality when you were playing and how, like, that – how – what like, what got you into the zone? Parts of my career earlier on, being a, a starter, it was a lot different than being a reliever. Um, starter, about an hour before I had to leave, it was like, okay, we're starting to narrow this thing down. I started getting a little bit pissed off, um, knowing that, again, you know, I have – five, six, seven innings, whatever, whatever was on the table that day, 120 pitches, whatever my ability was allowed to do that day. Um, the minute I'd get in the car, man, I'd jack up that radio, you know, um, little Rob Zombie or whatever, and get, get in that pissed off attitude. And when I walk in that door, I didn't talk to anybody. You know, I went to my locker, got my shit done, went to the training room, got my stuff done there, grabbed it, boom, out to the bullpen, let's go. Because, again, anybody that wants to kick their ass, come follow me out there. And if you don't want to go out there and kick their ass, then stay inside because we'll, we'll find nine guys that will do it. But that was my mentality. Say, I'm going out there to fight these guys, you know. And, again, you know, and, and that's, like I said, it started about an hour before I left. Um, that's where I really love that aspect of the game, you know, um, being a step of the hitter, you know, knowing, again, what I want to do. I'm going to do this to do that. You know, we talked about the idea of walking around that dome, seeing some of you high school guys in there. My, my, I lived and it survived in, in, in the course of my, my career by reading swings. I can see you guys hit off a tee or hit off a live and going, yeah, this is what I would do to this guy. This is what I would do to that guy. Yada, yada, yada. And like I said, because you have to figure those things out. You have to know what to look for um, and take that to your advantage. Um, as a reliever, you know, it was a little bit of a different mindset because, you know, if the starter, say the starter gave you a quality outing, five, six innings, you know, you're talking in, in, in the big league level. The last nine to 12 outs is all you have to get. Sounds simple, but they're the hardest outs to get, you know, especially when with the pressure start mounting. And again, a leadoff man could set or make or break an inning the whole nine yards. So, you know, that was like, hey, you kind of enjoyed it. You were a little bit more laid back. And that, that time frame was about the fourth or fifth inning in a game where you flip that switch and say, okay, let's, let's start sitting there again and getting a good idea of, again, who's handling what. You know, what are they doing to this guy? You know, the whole nine yards, how are they setting guys up? And you would go over that, you know, you know, prior to the, to the series starting, you know, um, and you would have that information. But you also, again, and, and, and you kind of said something, you be you. You have to define who you are. You have to define what you do well, what you don't do well. You know, what attributes do you bring to sit there and say, you know what, if you ask me to do something, I can do it and there's no problem with what you're asking me to do. You know, and there's other things where, you know, it might be a struggle and I'm going to have to give more attention to this. That's what we talk about again. When you identify those weaknesses, you know, you work on those to try to make them your strengths. The more strengths that you have, the better teammate, the better player that you're going to be. We know that, you know, so that, that was the flip of the switch there, you know. Um, and then like the, the RAS part was, again, just, just going and having fun, you know, uh, for a starter. 
you know, after you got done and you knew, like I said, the minute they took that ball away from you, if you pitched well, you're like, hey, man, let's just enjoy the rest of this. Let's knock this thing out. And then I got four days to prepare for my next start, who I know is going to be this in this stadium, you know, yada, yada. Um, and as a reliever, you're like, hey, you know, you have to have that short-term memory as if you did bad, either good or bad, really. We talk about, again, that wave. You know, you don't want to be really high or really low. And we see that a lot at the high school level. You know, a guy might go over for his first 12. You know, and he wants to snap and break everything in the dugout. And, hey, you just got to even the pace out because, again, you might go 11 for your next 15 and you're going to be okay. You know, but riding that wave up and down, you can't do that because, like I said, nobody wants a roller coaster guy. Yeah, we talk about that. We have a so what next, next pitch mentality and staying into your yellow zone, not getting too high, not getting too low. Really, I mean, and honestly, like, the, the, the nice part about it is, you know, you literally touched on – 15 different things that we've talked about for the last, you know, five or six weeks, which is just reaffirms what we're telling these kids. Like, you know, if, if you, if you can't, if you can't believe in yourself on a consistent basis, this game gets too hard as these kids get old, that, that even in high school, you know, like at the end of the day, the batting average is, is your average for a reason. Your ERA is your ERA for a reason, because, it's going to even out. If you're a good pitcher that you have one bad outing that, you know, the next three or four are going to be fine. And it's going to even your ERA out. Like you right. cannot get so locked in to one or two things and make the next three or four things worse just because of those one or two. All right. Um, well, and that's one of the things that, and, Go ahead. And just, and, and I think a lot of our high school athletes get caught up in that where they're like, what kind of numbers am I going to put? on my PBR page, you know, right. or any kind of, what information am I sending out there? And what you guys have to understand is that we're a vocal point for you. You know, whether it's an, an instructor, whether it's a, as a coach, we're, we're vocal points, the connection points between you and anybody is trying to facilitate you coming to their university. And we can sit there and say, okay, listen, you guys got a four and a half ERA. Yeah, but here's the reason why, you know, and you know, June 4th, he up seven runs in a third of an inning. You right. take that away, the guy's got a one, two, you know? So again, there's, there's, there's rhyme and reason. So that's why, again, you can't worry about, again, the numbers are going to be what they are. You know, all you can control is the effort level that you put into getting those numbers. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, when, when we talked on the phone before the call, um, you know, one of the questions I had was, you know, mentally, how did you, you know, how did you survive like, how did you have an edge on the hitter for 12 years? Or how did you survive for 12 years being a, being a reliever, being a starter, just being a pitcher? And, you know, I write, wrote here, have an elephant memory. And you have to play chess, not checkers. And, and basically what that means, and I'll let Bertie talk a little bit more about it, is, like, you have to understand. Like, Bertie probably knows more about the swing than 90% of hitting instructors because he was a big league pitcher. So he can identify, hey, you know, like he's studying the game and he's studying hitters. This guy can't handle a high fastball. Or after a high fastball, if even if he sees it, he's going to ch chase low and away, right? And he'll pick up on your hitting tendencies way faster than the average eye will. And so when I talk about having an elephant memory, he's like, I wouldn't know how to get certain guys out. And when I continually saw them, I had a plan and I was always two steps ahead. That's playing chess, not checkers. Already talk on this a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where we talked about the idea as a pitcher. You're always a step ahead. You're always in control of the situation. I am going to do this, whether it is a sinker away to see how you react to that, that pitch. Now, if you dive across the plate, then, okay, I can sit there and say, again, you're going to want to fish out there. That's fine. I'm going to go just a little bit farther. So you still can't barrel it up. It's still going to roll off the barrel of your bat and hit the end of the bat, so you're still not going to make hard contact. And if you dive farther enough, I'm going to pop you in just to keep you honest. You know, uh, we, always, we talk about exploiting weaknesses. You know, we talked about the idea of when I walk around the dome, I can see some of you high school guys, and I can, I can identify – you know, again, guys that want the ball in, guys that want the ball out, who can handle what, because that's what I needed to do. I needed to identify swings and see, again, who can do what, because, again, that, that dictated, again, will he chase down? Can I, get, can I get away with something down? Or is he a guy like, you make 100 pens, 
who has a really good tendency to drop that barrel quickly down and get under that ball somehow. Um, you know, so it's, it, that was where you really have to, you know, know again, I'm, I'm doing this. I want to be two steps ahead. I'm going to do this to do that and that. Now, if something changes in that pattern, I have to be able to readapt and say, okay, well now, now we know that this is open to set B and C up. So we're always adapting. Like I said, I love the idea of again playing chess. And I tell my, my 14 year old kids, if you don't know how to play chess, learn. And you don't even have to be good at it. It's just the idea of, again, anticipating what he is going to do and then go from that. Say, again, what can I do? Like I said, exploit weaknesses. If I know you can't hit something, here you go. Joey Votto, prime example. Lefty on lefty, he is going to shoot the ball to the left side of the field early in the count. Now, late in the count, he'll protect inside, but he will still give up that inner half. He's going to force you to bury stuff inside on him. And, and you know this. You know, so again, Jay Bruce, Jay Bruce, again, in, 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 the kids always give me, you know, crap about the home run that I gave up to him. And that home run that I gave up that, that, that put them in the playoffs, that was the first time and the only time ever of me facing him that he hit the ball to the left side of second base because he was a straight pull, try to hit it in the river, try to hit it 450 feet to right field, and you could go ahead and slide her under the desk. You know, and, you know, again, knowing that he was the only guy, you know, again, should I slide at him right away? Yeah, again, it wasn't a bad pitch. It was a fastball down the way or out away, maybe up a hair. But it just, like I said, you, you have to know and have to be prepared. Of, you've seen these guys enough. You know, you guys know, you know, what they can and can't do. Study them. Know what they, you know, know what your advantage is and exploit their weakness. And, again, if you know a guy has one, go to it. Because you don't know when you're going to have to exploit that. And we talked with the younger group that, you know, again, um, you may have to exploit that in, in, in the second or third inning because, again, the bases might be loaded with two outs and say, hey, you know what? Sorry, I'm going to go right here to my bread and butter to end this threat and then go back later on and see what we need to do. You know, yeah. so that's where, again, the idea of, of always trying to stay ahead and always stay in control. You know, I think a lot of you get younger guys see you panic. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, you, you sit there and you, you don't have that thought process. You know, um, throwing a, a pitch with conviction. You know, being on that same page, you know, and again, when you're talking about when your catcher's firing stuff down and you're like, oh, hell yeah, we're in the same zone and we're doing this and this and this and this, man, it, it, everything's, it's an it's easy day, you know, and a good starter in the big leagues will have that once or twice a month, you know, unless like, you know, you got like Arietta who went off for the Cubs a couple of years back and he had it like six times in the month and you're like, this is, this is unbelievable, you know. And it's, and it's learning when you don't have your good stuff, how to still get guys out to say, hey, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to run it. What do I need to do to just avoid that hard contact? Yeah, and that's – and like I said, it's a lot of, lot of value there, a lot of really, really good points. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, in, in going to point number three here on the big board, the starter versus reliever. And – what drives me nuts, and, and, and I can equate this, and hitters, if you're listening and you don't pitch, just equate this to you pinch hitting instead of, um, you know, starting and getting your four at-bats. It's, it's, it, it, whatever, comparable. But that mind frame of, you know, like, if you're a starter, and then let's say we get in one of these tournaments, and all of a sudden, you know, we get the championship Sunday, the semifinal game gets, gets tight, you're supposed to start the championship game if we win, but if we don't get there, now you got to come out of the bullpen, right? And you're used to starting and, you know, in your head, for whatever reason, it always just becomes negative. When you get out of your comfort zone and you have to become a reliever or you have to come in that fifth inning <clears throat> and, you know, kind of similar to where like if you were, you know, if you were starting and whatever, you're coming off the bench uh, as a hitter, but Bertie, Talk about these kids and talk about the difference um, in your starter and reliever mentality and how to like, just like, you got to get that notion out of your head that if you're not, you know, if you're relieving or you get put into a reliever situation and that it's got to be business as usual. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, you know, and that's all, it, it, it's, it's a little bit tougher to say it than to do it, you know, but again, you have to be under the, like I said, you're talking, you, no game is written in, 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 in to T, and, 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 and it, it's the, the team that deals with that adversity. You know, you can't sit there and, and, and like I said, you're in Indianapolis, you're sitting at the hotel, you're having your bagel, and you're like, you know, I'm going to write out exactly what's going to happen in this game. And then we're going to go there, and this is exactly what's going to happen. 
very few and far in between was, you said, are you going to get it hundred percent correct? Right. There's going to be adversity. You're going to sit there and say, shit, I, I, I need to, I need to make a change here in, in the second or third inning, which I wasn't planning on doing. And now, like I said, as a coach, you're sitting there going, okay, now I got to prepare this. You have to be prepared for any situation at any time, especially when you get in these tournaments, you know, when you're talking, Hey, you're, you're going to, you're going to be grinding it out. You know what? one on Friday or one on Thursday, one on Friday, two on Saturday, and hopefully two or three on Sunday. You guys have to understand that this script is wide open. You know, again, you're going to be asked to do things. So again, you have to lose the idea of sitting there going, well, you know what? Coach said, I'm going to pitch a second game. So I'm going to, I'm going to prepare for this. Like you have to be prepared. You know, like we could, we told the, the, the first group is you have to understand there's key moments in a baseball game. And as, as they're, they're very simple to identify as, as, as a coach or a manager, you sit there and say, okay, this could be the game. And it could happen in the second or third inning. Now, if we needed you to come in and put a fire out, now all of a sudden you got a 2-1 ball game. You come in and put the fire out, okay? Ball game stays 2-1. to one. Now you come in, you score one the next inning, two more the next inning. Now you start taking – now you completely change the aspect of that game where you start running away with it. And you came in at the most pivotal point of that game. Take it to the flip side of it. You know, you're not mentally prepared because you're like, well, he told me I was pitching the second one, and now he wants me to pitch in the third inning. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> so you get in there, and all of a sudden, you base is loaded, and all, all you need is one out. But instead of getting that guy out, guy laces a double in the gap. So now being instead of being down or up one, you're down three. You know, so now you've completely changed the game because, again, your focus was, well, he told me something else, and it didn't happen. You know, you know, one of the best managers that I ever played for was Jimmy Leland. And Jimmy Leland was as honest as it came. You know, my first day in, 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 in with him, we were in Boston. Comes up and he puts his arm around me. He's like, Bertie, he's like, you know, I've been, I've been watching what you're doing down there. He's like, you know, you've been going one, maybe two, right? And I said, well, yeah, Jimmy, depending on the situation. He's like, uh, well, can you give me three, maybe four? And I'm thinking, are you freaking nuts, old man? I have never gone more than really an inning or an inning and a third at, at this point in my career. And you want me to throw four freaking innings in a big league game? What am I going to tell him? No. I said, yeah. I said, whatever you need, depending on pitch count. It's a, you know, Hey, whatever you need, you know? And sure enough, I came in two innings that night, punched out what four out of the six, my bad. Um, <laughs> had the day off the next day we got, we got rained out by pure luck, you know? And then we came in the next day and I, and I threw two more. So I threw four innings in a matter of, of two back-to-back -back games, really. You know, and he came up to me, he's like, Bert, he's like, I asked you to take care of me and to protect my bullpen. He's like, I told you, and he, what he said at that point when we were out there, he's like, he's like, if you take care of me, I'll take care of you. He's, we're going to New York. In New York, we're swinging it pretty hot. He goes, I'm going to stay away from you as much as I can. I'm going to give you the, 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 hopefully the two, three days off because you did a hell of a job here in Boston to get our bullpen back to where it needed to be. Sure enough, man, we went in there. He gave you very few, I guess, maybe, maybe an inning that, that next, that next uh, uh, series towards the back end of it and it was good and from that point on man the honesty and, and the, the approach that he took I take with my players to this day there's going to be things that I will tell you if you if you ever play for me that you might not want to hear but you need to hear right because if I if we pretend that everything is okay in this society today say oh don't worry it's all right no one in the back of my no it's not because again if, if you can't do this and you're not willing to try to get better at doing it when I need you to do it the most I'm going to somebody else and then what happens? You're pissed off now because I went to somebody else and I didn't give you a shot. Why didn't I give you a shot? Because I knew you couldn't do it. And you haven't proved to me yet that you could or that you wanted to try to do, get better to do it. So there's a lot that goes into that. So again, you have to understand how that all plays out. You know, as a reliever, I guess it, I, I just took it, look at every game as, a, as your, your reliever. You know, you might be in the beginning of the game. That's great. But be prepared for anything that can happen because, again, the script is never down to a T. Very few times, like I said, where you're going to get it right saying, hey, this worked out perfect, man. We scored 15 on these guys. I got so-and-so for this game, and we do this right. We got him for the championship game, and we're locked in. We're walking out of here with some, with some hard work, you know. So you have to understand that anything can happen at any moment and just be ready for that opportunity because you never know who's watching and, like I said, who's evaluating. Yeah, and that's – but like I said, there, there's certain guys that will be at your games and they want to see you in those situations. These college scouts want to see you out of your normal. All right, let, 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 you know, hey, so-and-so just came out of the bullpen. Let's see what he's got. Let's see, let, you know, let's see who's got the, give me the ball in whatever situation mentality and go out there and, you know, 
have that killer instinct, have the, the big ball syndrome. Like, you know, I tell the pitchers all the time when I'm coaching them, like, dude, when, like, we, you got to walk out there with the biggest set of balls and just drag them, drag them behind you. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's the moxie and the body language and, and the type of mentality that I want that junkyard dog on the ball, on, on the mound. And right. what Bertie said, when, when he was in his w- w- routines, it's like, all right, he's a fun-loving guy. When it, when, when it was his day, right, he walked in the clubhouse. Everyone knew that it was not just, I'm going to grab your ass. It was, all right, it's go time. And that, that culture and that body language set the tone for the whole team. And I challenge you guys, like, you know, who's the tone setter? And honestly, it's the guy that has the ball that day. Cause that's the only guarantee is like, Hey, you're going to, we're going to go as far as that dude leads us in the first two or three innings or the first inning or whatever the case is. And that when he sets the, when the pitcher sets the tone like that two hours before the game, I mean, there's some significant value there and there's some significant leadership that listen, when you know it's your day for the ball, you have to set the tone as soon as you get to the ball field because you want everyone behind you ready to roll. You want everyone locked in for their at bats, you know, because that's just, you know, and 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 that's the difference. I think like you could be the happy go loving kid, but when that you gotta know when that switch has got to be flipped, right? You gotta know when it's go time. And and that's you know. That's what it is. And if, and if some guy, you know, the, 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 the best competitors that I've ever coached were the guys that were begging for the ball in the fifth inning when the semifinal game, when it got close. And we, we didn't even have to ask them. They were like, hey, am I pitching right now? Should I go warm up? That was their mentality. They, they, they wanted that moment, you know, and that's what you got. That's what you really got to strive for mentally when you get out of the, when, when you get out of your own comfort zone, because you're just in a killer mentality. That's it. Um, 30 talk last point here. Let's talk about, we got, we got some POs on this, uh, on the call. And I think it's, I think it's valuable that we talk like, all right, team first, you second, we all get that, right? It's a team game. You're rooting for the next guy. You're rooting for your teammate. You're going to war with them. But at the end of the day, it's an individual sport. How as two things. So if you're a reliever, right, you got five dudes that are sitting next to you that potentially could take your job. They'll get paid more than you or, or kick you out of the road, whatever the case is. So you're actually equals. So I want you to talk about, one, how you still can be a good teammate with the guys you're competing against on your team. And number two, how, do you, how are you a good teammate when you were a starter? And let's just say you knew you weren't pitching for three days. What were you studying? How were you getting better? What were you learning about your opponents? or contributing to the team when you know that you were down for the next two or three games? You know, I, I look at that that comment right there. It, it, it's the epitome of the 2008 Detroit Tigers. Um, I went to camp with them, um, and I wound up getting released at the end of spring training um, for <laughs> because I was fishing, believe it or not. It's a long story. Um, but um, I had stretched <laughs> out. I, I would – it was so boring down in Florida, you know, and there's lakes all over the place that, you know, I'd go fishing for shit, six, seven, eight hours a day after I'm done, just doing this, doing this, doing it, not even realizing that I'm putting pressure on my elbow and I'm reeling it, whatever, you know, and I couldn't get anybody out. Right. So they wind up releasing me. And that was the year that they're like, you know, I think they brought in, um, um, Miguel Cabrera. Um, they, 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 they stack, it was a stack team. They, they, they basically said, they, and we even had a reporter in spring training that was like, I'm doing my documentary right now. This is the year that the Tigers win the World Series. I'm going to get, you know, every, you know, okay, whatever, but let's not jump the gun. And I, I think want, they want to finish up like in third place in the division. And this is a team who's supposed to be like the World Series champs. And I called one of my buddies on a I said, dude, what's going on over there? He's like, you know what, man? He goes, we got a lot of guys around here who are making a crap load of money, and they don't give a rat's ass about the team. They're all about themselves. You know, they're about, again, okay, man, I went three for four. Well, you didn't do, you went 0 for two or 0 for three. So you losses on you, not on me. You know, quality at bats. You know, that's one of the things that, you know, learning the baseball, being the, the player rep for a couple of different teams, and you learn the, the, the business aspect of it. When you get into arbitration, one of the things that they look at, and one of, the, one of the key components, when you're sitting there saying, I deserve $5 million. And they're going to sit there. So you okay, here's your comps. You're saying that you're just like these two guys. But here's the problem. 
those two guys that you're saying that you're like, from the fifth inning on, they hit 360 with X amount of home runs. They get it done when the, when they, when the game starts getting tight, they get better. You're down here, you're hitting 248. So when the game gets tight, your butthole gets tight. So you're not producing nearly what they're doing. So you're not the same type of person that they are. And consequently, we can't say that you should make their salary because when a game gets tight, when Wayne, your team needs you the most, you don't produce. So that's a big key component on that. You know, like I said, you, know, you talk about going kind of back to that starter reliever thing. Well, okay, yeah, as the game's starting to play out in the first two, three, four, five innings, you get a flow of that game. It's really what happens that last, what, for us, fifth, sixth, seventh inning? You know, when, 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 when it, it's nut crunching time, how are you going to stand up and how are you going to distance yourself? You know, and if you fail to sit there and say, hey, man, you know what? Again, striking out, hey, he's got a good split or, hey, he's running that two-seamer in to let the other guy know, hey, you know, I, I didn't get it done. But the information that I have now that I can share with you gives you a better chance. And if you can utilize that information, you know what? Hey, now all of a sudden you get that hit at the end, dude, we're, we're golden. You know, because, again, we're sharing that information. You know, we talked about, again, the idea of stats, man. Stats, they're, they're going to be what they're going to be. You know, like I said, you, you know, these schools nowadays, they, they, they're, they're looking for teammates, too. They're looking for the type of person that you are, too. You know, um, you know, you don't want to be able to call up a coach. What type of person? Yeah, that's, that's a jerk, man. He doesn't say nothing to nobody. He's out for himself. You know, the people that you have around you, you know, again, you can't play the game by yourself. You need that supporting cast. And hopefully all you guys watched that, that Michael Jordan film, you know, and it was the supporting cast around him. But again, is Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan without Scottie Pippen? Hell no. You know, I watched a documentary and one of the, one of the, the old, one of the few things that pissed me off about it was when they were talking about that, that, that game seven, when, when, when Pippen was back, was, was, was going out on him. You know, Michael told us that, oh, you know, well, you know, Scotty's got his back thing. He's like, you know, so I'm bringing all the energy. I'm taking all the shots. And he's like, it's me, 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 me. It's like, no, man, you had four of the guys on the court with you that, again, that were helping you out. It wasn't just about you. So, yeah. and again, and you have to have, you got to be able to share that information because, again, you know, it, it, it's vital for, for that, like, that aspect of, again, of, of wanting to, to be a good teammate, again, be able to share that. I guess. And, and to, if you are surrounded with a bunch of guys, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, to a certain aspect that makes the Sparks organization successful is that you're surrounding yourself with guys that want to get better and want to, they strive to be the best guy on that team. If you can give me at the high school level, 15, 20 guys on a travel team that are all striving to be the best, you're going to have a damn good team. Cause again, you got grinders and we, the guys that get again, that, you know, again, you, you, you have to figure things out. Willie Harris was the guy who made the SWAT team t-shirts. That's who I was thinking of his name just finally popped in my mind. You know, but you have to be in that, that, that mode where, again, you're, you're in this as a unit, you know, and, and, and to carry that on through. And as a Sparks organization, you know, you're, you're in those high competitive games. You know, there, there is a difference. I'm going to tell you this right now as, as, as an outside coach, you know, at the high school level and even, at, you know, when, when we do the fall program and some of the teams, there's a huge difference in, in, in our mentality or organization because we play such high level games. And that's one of the reasons why people want to get into our organization because, again, other schools know that, again, a Sparks kid, odds are they've been in those tough situations in the fifth, sixth, seventh inning. You know, and this is before CJ kind of came over. I'll never forget this. Uh, uh, Chad Hayes had the team, and they were playing um, – it was actually the White Sox aces. And they were down, like, three runs going into the last inning. And – you're looking at a dugout, and I'm like, man, it's, this, this sucks. We're, we're going to lose to these guys, and we're, we thought we were a better team, you know, but, oh, it's baseball, whatever, and stuff like that. But the demeanor of the kids were like, don't worry, we're all right. It's all right. Guys, you're down three. Next thing you know, first out's made, guy gets on, another out. And, but they never lost that focus because, again, they had been in so many tough situations. They went bam, 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 three, four hits in a row, and they wound up walking it off, and you're sitting there going – and I think this is at maybe 11 years old. I was dumbfounded. Just the, 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 the and it, it was a confidence. It wasn't an arrogance. It was a confidence to sit there saying, hey, I know what I need to do. Let's just get it done because I've, I've been in here before. 
And if I'm an outside scout or coach, I'm sort of going, that was freaking awesome. Because those kids never panicked. They were in control. Even when they scored runs, it wasn't like, oh, my God, this is awesome. It was like, hey, all right, that's good. But we know that we're not there yet. You know, and I guess it was, it was unbelievable to see. And like I said, and that's where the Sparks organization, we talked about them. You know, you got to be a grinder. Even though you're on the Sparks team, you got to be that guy that said, hey, I'm still striving to be the best in everything that I do. And you surround guys like that. Like I said, you, you're, it's, it's the team first and you second. Like I said, because the, now the team grabs that. And, and, and that's the one thing that if you're surrounded with that and you guys all have that, you, you share that approach. You know, and we, we, we make notes as coaches and stuff like that, things that you want to bring and, you know, setting goals and, and, and how you want to, you know, to, to kind of connect with your team and stuff like that and everything. And just how do you get that out of them? Because like, if, you, if you surround it and we're all on that same page, you, the chance of you guys being successful is, is, is enormous because, like I said, you're all buying into that one concept. And at the end of the day, too, it's that, you know, I, I like to call it the bright light, big stage mentality where you're going to want that moment. You've got to want oh. your back against the wall a little bit. I feel like, you know, it's, a, it's that fight or flight mentality. And the more times you can be in a moment like that, the more times you're in that fight moment. And it's like, we're not losing. And, and, and you know, in the dugouts that I've been in on the, the high level travel teams with, with Christian and things like that, it's like, you know, you, you just, when you have groups with, with, with killer instincts like that, you just you coach less because they're, they know what needs to be done. And then you allow that kind of to evolve. But those are dugouts that you want to be in. Those are moments you want to be in. You want to be bright light, big stage. You want be, you, you know, you, you want that coach that's watching going, I want all, of, I, I don't just want one guy. I want the whole team. This is what I want my team to look like, you know, and, and at the youth level, at your guys' level that you, you can create that atmosphere. I have a video um, when we were in the Colonels this year, you know, our, the, whatever, the top team wasn't playing because their field was rained out. Well, the, the second team was playing. We, they all went in the second team's dugout, right? And then all of a sudden, now whoever we were playing, they were, they were up against 40 dudes. And they were being, uh, just ask Dean. Dean was, Dean was right in the middle of it. They, they had the, you know, it was loud. It was, and we ended up walking off and then it was a big deal. But, but the point is, is like, you feed off of that culture and then all of a sudden you take that with you. And uh, what you'll figure out is that as you branch out into different colleges, and you get into your high school team, that most players don't have that inside of them or have never been experienced to that. And then that's why you'll have an advantage when you go outside of the Sparks community because that, I mean, that's the culture that we created. And that's the, that's the cool part about kind of what Birdie's talking about, the mentality and, um, you know, a lot, a lot of good stuff there. Birdie, close us out with, if you were, um, if you were to give yourself advice when you were in high school, talking to these kids right now before they get off this call, and they're going to start playing soon, um, you know, sum up what what advice you'd give yourself if you could talk to yourself, you know, however many years back. Oh, that's tough, you know, because um, I was so awesome, you know. Um, <laughs> kid. Um, no, you know, honestly, um, we talked about work ethic earlier on, you know, but I think. It's kind of that each their own, you know, um, you have to understand that my, my biggest advice would just continue to learn, you know, um, what I've seen a little bit in the dome is that we have, and, and it is true to a certain degree is everybody has somebody now. I got a fielding guy. I have a, a, a hitting guy, a pitching guy. I've got all my guys lined up, you know, um, and one of the things that I told, you know, um, some of the, some of the kids are coming to see me is that do me a favor. You know, don't sign up for a 10 pack right away, you know, do a, do a one or two lesson. I said, go see two other, three other people, you know, and they look at you like, are you freaking nuts? You're telling me to go someplace else. I'm like, no, because I, I want you to, to understand this is what I'm going to tell you. This is what I'm going to see. Go see somebody else and see if the, if the message is similar. You know, yeah. if it's similar, then you sit there and say, okay, which guy did I connect with the best? And let's go. I said, that's the guy that I want to, I want to hang out with. And that's the guy I want to learn from. You know, I think there's a mentality sometimes where, again, you know, we have the idea that I kind of know everything, you know, and, and, and even now, I mean, I, I have a stack of, of, of books and, and, and news clippings and 
the whole nine yards, you know, I think there was a comment that I saw, you know, from Leo Mazzoni and they were talking about, you know, I think it was Smoltz was pitching a game and um, uh, what was the term? He, uh, the, the max out inning is what he referred to it as. And it was basically, okay, Smoltz was going out for the ace and he goes, Leo, this is it. This is his max out inning, you know? He's like, because he is not going out. I don't care if he goes one, two, three on three pitches. He's not going out for the ninth. He's done. You know, and Leo would go and relay that saying, okay, max out. You know what to, you know what to do. And Smoltz, yeah, I got you. You know, and, and, and that was it. That was his cutest. He said, all right, I'm going to give you everything I got. You know, here's my sprint to the finish. You know, so I would just say just be open to, to, to learning as much as you can. You know, and, and like I said, the, the, the thought process, the, the learning curve, it, it never stops. You know, because I think as, as instructors, you know, especially in, in our place, if we stop learning, we don't do any of you guys that are listening to this call any good. You know, right. uh, like I said, because I, I, you can't sit there and I can't, I can't, and I can't coach you like it's 1970 or 1980. You know, I can't pull out, let's come over to the house and we'll watch a Tom Amansky video on the VHS. And this is what <laughs> we do. We have some staples there, but the game has changed and stuff like that. So I would just say you just be open to learning. You know, like I said, uh, and that's the one thing. You know, like I said, I, I love talking to guys, you know, um, and that's the one thing I think that, that outside of my career is that once you're done playing, it just seems like there's drizzly, you know, like when I was a kid, I was like, man, is that, yeah, if I got a chance to work with a, with a big league guy, man, I'm listening to everything he says. You know, like I said, now it's kind of like, eh, yeah, it's, it's whatever. It's just a big league guy. It's not that big of a deal. We have a lot of information that we can share with you guys. And I'll tell you something right now. I mean, we talk about the back end of those games and we talk about, you know, those times where you're locked in and, and again, it, it's, it's, it's that, that those moments right there when your career, whether it's in high school or whether it's in college or whether when that ends and you don't have those opportunities at the end of a game to prove yourself, that's what you're going to miss the most. Because like I said, you, you can go into the, into the last inning down one, two, I don't care, five. And you're not going to sit there going, all right, let's just, you know, let's just strike out and go to, you know, we'll go back to the hotel. Again, it's the grind of saying, let me get this thing started. If I can get on, then again, now we get the hip parade going. Like it's like, let's do this. Let's prove everybody that thinks this is over wrong. And like I said, and, and that's why we play this game is to strive us, like I said, to, to, for that, to that moment, to show everybody that you can do more than what they think you're capable of doing. And, you know, like I said, if you can do that, man, like I said, it's, you're, you're going to walk away saying, you know what, I have no regrets. You know, don't be a woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know, I did everything. I laid it out there. You know, for me, I remember that last game in New York, I knew it was over. You know, I had lefties that were coming in throwing 94 plus, you know, I was damaged, you know, fixed up, you know, throwing 89, 90 if that, you know, with, you know, not my A stuff anymore. And it was done, you know, and I, as I walked off that field, I said, you know what, goodbye, old friend, you know, because I knew I was never stepping back on that mound again. And, you know, like I said, it, and that's where, again, strive for those moments, you know, live for those moments. Because you, like I said, you know, when, when, you, when you get there and you, you accomplish that, best feeling in the world. Yeah. We got, we got two, it's really good. We got two questions. Um, I throw it out there with the high school groups with our guests. And um, with, first question, would you rather be a starter or reliever? Hmm. In today's game, <laughs> even as a number five starter, you're making about five, six million bucks. So, and that's with having a four and a half. Um, <laughs> God. That's ERA he's talking about too. Yeah. You know, you know, wow. I mean, I would still probably, you know, again, I said for me as, as a lefty, you know, knowing, like I said, you know, if I'm, if I'm not closing, I would rather start, you know, I like the idea of controlling a game and, you know, like I said, being out there with the guys and, and, and like I said, and, and grinding it out. And like I said, cause you, know, you, you get a chance to do more things, you know, again, uh, you get a chance to get a couple more mistakes here and there, like I said, you know, come back. Oh you know, yeah. I, I made, I missed, missed a pitch on this guy, but I made a pitch on this guy to get a double play. So I've got to really be a starter. Yeah. Um, and last question, can you tell the story about you being Hulk Hogan? Uh, um, Hulk Hogan, um, that started where I started coming in every year with different facial hair. And I kind of did it just to piss off the PR people because they would take your picture in spring training and they would tell you that if you plan on having facial hair, you have to really have it on the whole year because that's the picture they're going to use. So if you have a Fu Manchu or if you have a full beard, then you have nothing on your face going to look stupid. So I would come in and I started with, you know, a goatee and I started with, you know, a uh, uh, big chop, whatever, big chops, whatever. And I finally went to the full beard. And then I finally, after the full beard, I came in with a Fu Manchu and David Wright goes, what are you going to do with that thing? 
I said, well, you're going to laugh your ass off when I come in and, and, I, and I dye this thing blonde and come in, it's Hulk Hogan. He goes, bullshit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? So there I sat in a beauty salon for like an hour and a half getting a high off the freaking bleach it. She's bleaching it. And she was laughing her butt. I couldn't believe I was doing it. So I get it all bleached, right? And we had ordered the, the, the Hulk Hogan costume. But for some reason, the shorts weren't in there. So we're like, what the hell are we going to do, man? So I'm at Target. And I'm looking around. I'm looking, trying to find something. And all we can find is Red Haynes underwear. And I'm like, this is kind of crazy, but this would actually work, you know? So when I got dressed up, I'm like, I can't go running outside in my freaking underwear, man. People are like, what the hell? But then the thought process, well, they're not going to know that they're not wrestling shorts. So there I was running around. And um, Brad, I don't know if you, if you guys have watched the video, the guy that I run out to, our strength and conditioning guy, he was awesome. Um, he would like to undress, especially the rookies. You know, if the rookies came out late, he would put them on top of one of the, um, the step-ups in the middle of it. And he, he would stretch, you know, two feet, three feet above everybody else and stuff like that. And um, Brad was a great dude. And I went out there. So Brad was, you know, what's we up for a run? And, and he put the towel up to his face. And he's like, I can't. I said, what do you mean you can't? He goes, I can't stop looking at your pecker. <laughs> I said, focus up here, Brad. Um, so that's kind of how that started. And like I said, just kind of just for pure fun to kind of, like I said, loosen up the guys and have a little fun, man. That's good. That's good. Well, Bertie, thanks for joining us. I know the high school kids, a lot of value today. Um, hopefully, guys, you got to be ready. We're going soon. I don't know when we're going, but we're going soon. Stay ready. Stay ready like it's like you're playing tomorrow. Um, Bertie, plenty of value there. And like I said, once we get rolling back in the dome, you guys see him in there, ask him questions. He'll be around. You got it, guys. Thanks, Bertie. You got it, man.